Oh yes, I'm extremely excited at this moment. Hi guys, I just maybe two minutes ago received this package, but obviously because of the title up there, you already know what's in it. This should be an original MP40 from 1941. I ordered this a couple days ago and uh, I've been waiting all day long and it's late in the evening right now, but I finally received the package. I can't wait to unbox it. I'm going to unbox it right here because my collector's room upstairs is still a mess because of my other video. Um, I have to clean that up. But yeah, uh, like I said, it's still a mess. I'm gonna unbox it here together with my dog. Um, are we going to unbox something that you don't understand at all? But we are going to... Oh, I can't wait. I'm just gonna stop talking and let's open this box up. I have to be really careful because I do not want to damage it. Where is the opening? Uh, let's just put it down like that. Poor. The weight is on one side. That's a good thing because an MP40 is not this long, so... No, it's not a giant bone. Like this, you already have a bone. Here you go. What kind of box is this? Where's the opening? Ah, this might be the opening. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, I found the opening. Okay, here we go. Oh man, I need to sharpen my knife. I've been poking this knife in the ground a few times when metal detecting. And that's not really a good thing to do with your knife. Okay. Oh man, this is so exciting, you can't even tell. Ugh, this is so exciting. It almost makes me sick. Here we go. Ooh! See that paper? I always keep paper like this because I can always use it again for rations and stuff like that. It's historically correct paper. So yeah. Oh man, I can already see the barrel. Ooh, makes me sick, makes me sick. There should also be a certificate in there. Yes, here we go, certificate. Um, 1402-2020, BNZ MP40, yes, that's correct, what's my dog doing, no, 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 don't play with the paper, don't play with your, uh, bone stuff, here you go, oh my god, that postman has no idea what he just delivered, damn, <laughs> oh my god, look at this beautiful, original, MP40 from 1941. Oh god, I don't know what to say. And it looks like we have, yeah, matching numbers. The website where I bought it from was really bad with information. No information at all, no good pictures. Really bad communication, just... But luckily I got it. So, I'm happy with that. Oh my god. Look at this. This is insane. Oh my goodness. MP40 BNZ41, uh, number 4337, and this is marked 37. It's all marked 37. I didn't even know if it was matching or not, but it's it's matching. Matching numbers! MP40, MP40, oh my god, look at this. Oh, my pistola fertig. Oh yeah, this is amazing. Um, let's get rid of the box. Look at this, guys. This is an original MP40 produced in 1941. Well, if we push this button, the stock will fold like that. And it's going to be extremely comfortable like this. This MP40 is deactivated. So this is perfect for reenacting. I really, really love it that it's matte. Oh man, I love this MP40. Okay, I'm literally in love with it. It's even prettier than I thought. Um, I had an MP40 before, and there was also a very nice looking MP40. It still had a lot of the original finish on it, but what I like about this one is you can see it's completely silver. It's just so used that it's completely worn off. So that's something that I really, really like. A lot of times you see the original footage and uh, pictures uh, of German soldiers running around with MP40s. You can see the same look. You see the complete silver color of using it every single day. Oh my god, and it smells like Stahl. Oh, this is so amazing. Look at that sight. Oh my god. And uh, like I said, it's deactivated, so it's not possible to cock and click anymore. The rules are really strange and they all changed again and blah 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 blah. With some of them it's actually still possible to cock and click like the MG42s and stuff that I have. Uh, some of them are uh, able to still eject the magazine and blah blah blah. Um, but really also depends where it was deactivated and when. Uh, the other MP40 that I had, I was really irritated by the fact that the magazine was not completely in there. The magazine was in there halfway and then it was welded. And um, the trigger was 
like backwards and then weld it. So I, I mean, come on guys, if you deactivate a historical weapon like that, do it the right way. Don't just screw it up like that. I really hate it because it's really important to keep these amazing pieces of history alive. And a lot of people are saying, oh man, why you buy deactivated weapons, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's trash. No, it's not trash. Okay, I understand that it's hard to deactivate um, original weapons. And I also don't like it, but you know, if you have the chance between getting destroyed forever or deactivated, then I would go for deactivated because a lot of times when they find these weapons, uh, if you're lucky, they go to a museum or something. But if that's not possible, a lot of times they will just destroy these weapons. This one was lucky enough to get deactivated. By the way, guys, never ever look into the barrel of a pistol or machine gun or whatever, rifle. Never do that. This one is obviously deactivated. I've been pulling the trigger already. Impossible. It cannot be loaded. So I'm just gonna take a look into the barrel, but never ever do this. But I'm doing this because I know I can. Because you always have to handle a weapon like it's loaded, so don't play around with that. I'm definitely gonna use this one in many videos. Look at this one! Oh my god! I know this is not really the typical way of an unboxing video, <laughs> right just here in the bed and, you know, normally I would do it in my collector's room, but like I said before, it's a, it's a real mess up there, so I can't just, I can't even go up because the stairs is full of my <laughs> equipment and everything. I'm just like a little kid with toys everywhere. Uh, in my case, they are machine guns and stuff. <laughs> we are right next to my dog, which is falling asleep because I'm so boring. Um, let's take a look at this beautiful original MP40. Here we have the marking. You can see it's been used a lot. It has a lot of pitting and scratches. I really like that. MP40 BNZ, which is the maker code. 41, which is the year 1941. And then the serial number 4337. And if we take a look right uh, there, you can see again 4337. We go to the front of the barrel. 4337 and also on the stock right here 37 right there. Oh man, this one has been used a lot. That's really cool Also right there on the barrel we can see the number again 37 and I actually just noticed that a part right here is missing There should be a part right here it has a nice original magazine marked MP38 und 40 which means MP38 and MP40 if I look at the wear it actually looks like this part was already gone, so maybe this was lost in the war already. It really looks like it. So that's a good thing, I mean, you don't need this. Interesting. I don't mind that it's gone. Alright, so here we are. I don't know why I'm doing this this late in the evening, but here we are in complete German uh, paratrooper gear. So a lot of people have been asking me this question, can you show us your uh, German paratrooper uniform? And here I am, I decided to show my MP40 in my German paratrooper uniform. Normally I would film something like this in my trench or right in front of my bunker, but every day when I'm done doing all my stuff, it's dark already so I can't film. Um, so I just decided to do it inside. So here we are, inside. It's very hot <laughs> in a German paratrooper uniform. All right, so first of all, my MP40. I'm extremely happy with it, just look at this. Oh my God, this is so amazing. <laughs> oh man, I just absolutely love the MP40. Oh man, look at this. It's so iconic and it has a very nice folding stock. As you can see, it's very nice and comfortable. Fires from an open bolt. Wow, what a piece of history. And it's very nice and well used. One of the issues with the MP40 was that when holding it like this on the magazine right there, sometimes it would have some problems with feeding the rounds into the chamber. Uh, so a lot of times you can also see them shooting like this, just holding it like that. And I have to say that's also really comfortable. So, and um, almost no recoil at all and really accurate 9mm uh, caliber. I do not have a sling on it at this moment, but I think it just might keep it like this. A lot of times you can see them also just walking around with them. Um, uh, without the sling, so I think it's really comfortable to just hold it in the hand like that. Uh, let's talk about the uniform a bit as well. First of all, I'm wearing the M38 paratrooper helmet. It's very nice and comfortable. You can see that with the paratrooper chin strap. It's a really interesting way. You can, this is how you release it. You just have this small thing right there. You pull and ah, that's much better. There we go. But um, yeah, that's the uh, paratrooper helmet. This is how you tighten it up. Here you go. And you got this small button right there and it goes up. 
So that's interesting. You can see that the color tabs are yellow, which indicates paratrooper. Uh, then we have these two birds, and these two indicate the soldier's rank. In this case, it's going to be Gefreiter. I'm wearing a Splittertan camouflage uh, Knochensack uh, with a hand applied eagle right there. Then here we got the M43 cap, but then, of course, Luftwaffe with a German eagle and blue. Right here we have the Luftwaffe belt buckle. It's the second version Eagle. The early one has a hanging tail, and this is uh, the second one. It's a late model, steel, painted blue. Here we have two MP40 magazine pouches. Um, also this, this is for a speed loader. If we turn around, you can see, first of all, I got my camouflage gas mask canister with gas mask, and this small bag right here is the gas plantasche. There is a gas cape in there. Underneath that, we got my M31 Kochgeschirr, and right next to it is the fuel bottle. Um, those are attached to my M31 bread bag. Got your personal stuff in there, cleaning kit and stuff like that. Uh, I got a shovel right there, still a little bit dirty. Shovel in the cover. Of course, there's a lot more equipment that you can wear, but this is just the standard stuff that I'm wearing right now. Also, the Y strap makes it very comfortable. If you have an A-frame with a Zeltbahn and stuff on it, you can attach these to that as well, but I'm not wearing the A-frame at this moment. Um, let me show you the uh, Fliegerbluse. Also, this is one thing why I really love the German equipment. It's really easy to take everything off at once. Um, here we got the gas mask canister. Let's take that off first. Gas mask. And the only thing we have to do now is just... Whoop, and here we go. Everything's gone. So, that's something that I really like. Now let's show you what I got under here. We got my uh, wool tunic, Fliegerbluse. That's why it's so warm in here, because I, I'm wearing wool inside, which is pretty insane. Knochensack. And here we go. And shoulder boards, yellow. Gefreiter. Uh, there we go. We can wear it with the M43 field cap. I really like these caps. Great design. You can unbutton these, you have it very nice over your face. Great for in the winter. So, M43 fuel cap. Underneath here, there's nothing really special to see. There we go. I'm sweating at this moment. But, uh, nothing special. Oh, by the way, here I got my Erkennungsmarke, or dog tag. Uh, the German dog tag, standard a couple days ago, so I'll have to put a strap around it. But, look, only a number, which is typical for uh, German paratroopers. And we got the blood type right there, and a T, and you see that a lot on paratrooper dog tags, that's for the tetanus shot. So uh, yeah, it's a very nice paratrooper at Cannon's Market. Also, I'm wearing the first type of paratrooper boots at this moment with the lace on the side. Um, later you got them on the front. Still a little bit stiff because I've not been using them a lot, but I will definitely use them a lot more in the future. So yeah, really nice looking boots. And this is what they look like on the bottom. But now let's talk about the MP40 again. Oh man, just look at this iconic Maschinenpistole 40. This particular one was produced in 1941 by BNZ. I just really like the look of this one. Uh, it's been used a lot. The original finish is completely worn off and that's, that's the thing that I actually like about this one. When I saw this one for sale, I just had to buy it. And something interesting about the piece right here missing, that part is to protect the barrel. It's made from Bakelite, and of course Bakelite can break. If this hits something really hard, it can break and it can fall off. Uh, the cool thing is, uh, there are a lot of pictures and original footage uh, of soldiers using the MP40, uh, while also this piece was missing. And by the looks of it, I'm pretty convinced this was also already gone during the war. So. I'm actually gonna keep it like that. I think it's really cool, especially because there are so much pictures um, of MP40s also missing this piece. It really matches the way the complete MP40 looks, the way it's worn and everything. I really like it. Just look at that sight right here. Typically something that you would see in the video games. You always see this. <laughs> it's so amazing. And to just hold one like that. Click, 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 click. How amazing is that? Right here in the back you can see this. And that's really interesting because that's definitely from putting it down on the ground like this. You know, just sitting on the ground and putting it down, that's what happens. So that's something that I really like. And you can see the same thing right here. You can see that? 
that's that's really cool from just laying it like this you know and I really like the matching numbers because this is just the way it looked in World War II. Just think about this. This is the exact same MP40 that German soldiers were carrying and shooting with in 1941, 42, 43, 44, 45. It's a pretty early one, so it saw a lot of action. By the way, this is how you unfold the stock. You got this button right there. You press that, and there you go. And then you just slam this, and you're ready to go. Right here, we got the S for safety. So you would pull the bolt all the way to the back and it goes in there, it locks in there and then it's impossible to fire. Um, this is also interesting. It would be impossible to pull the bolt backwards without doing this. So that's also another safety. The grips are made from Bakelite. Also this part, the side part, made from Bakelite. Uh, it's also really easy to field strip the MP40. Just pull this right here, turn it around and you can you take it apart. So it's, it's really easy. This is how you would release a magazine, push the button and pull the magazine out and ready to reload. And also like I explained many times before, people say, oh it's deactivated, now it's trash and blah blah blah, stuff like that. Okay, you know, for instance, if a World War II veteran from maybe 95 years old cannot fire a gun anymore, would you have less respect for him? I don't think so. This is still a beautiful piece of history, also an extremely important piece of history, and we need to take care of that. Uh, all right, so yeah, uh, I thought we are talking about weapons right now. Why not just get them all down here? <laughs> oh man, it was a lot of work getting all these weapons down here, especially those fat MGs. They are extremely heavy, but since they are here, let's take a closer look at them. We got some pistols, we got some flares, we got the PPSH and a lot more awesome toys right here. Not a lot of space here. You, you guys have probably seen these before in my videos, but I mean, we're talking about my weapons right now, so. So here we got a small pistol, really nice FN-22. It's a Belgian pistol. This one was produced during the war. Really interesting because this one was actually produced for the Germans. You can see it has the German stamps right there. So that makes this one really interesting. Here we got the magazine right there. Really easy to release. The ah! That was not. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Woo! Luckily, I didn't damage anything. But yeah, I was right. I said really easy to release the magazine. So that proved it. Um, <laughs> uh, but that's something that I really like. As long as it's not above your expensive other weapons. But there we go. Here we have a beautiful Walter P38. Really, really nice use condition. And just hear that sound. Yeah, just a really nice original Walter P38 from 1943. Just look at that. Beautiful pistol. Uh, Bakelite grips. Uh, here we have a Colt 45 from 1944. I showed this one before on Instagram, but not really on videos. It's a really nice Colt made in 44. United States property M1911. Right there, US Army. That's really cool. Look how intimidating this is. Look at the caliber, 45, that's insane. Again, the sound, oh God, that's so nice. And a really nice safety. You see, you cannot fire unless you have your hand right there, push you that, then you will be able to fire, which is really nice. Yeah, that's typical that you see in every single video game. Walking around like this. Here we got two flare guns. This one is from the First World War. It was left behind in the town where I live. It still works. And um, so it was used in the Second World War again, which is really cool. But uh, that's a very nice original World War I flare gun. Here we got a World War II flare gun made from aluminum, really light. Um, Nicely marked and everything. I'm not really getting into the markings right now because we got a lot of stuff here and this video was only about the MP40 in the first place, but yeah. But I'm not getting into all the small details and stuff right now. PPSH from World War II. And if I have to be honest, uh, which one is better, MP40 or PPSH? Yeah, I would go for the PPSH. High rate of fire, uh, the Germans liked it a lot as well. That's why they used it a lot and they even converted them to nine millimeter caliber. Really iconic. PPSH. Hurra. Then of course we have the M1 Garand with this for the winter trigger. Uh, this one was produced in 1944. 
bayonet fix. Um, I use this one a lot with reenacting. It's just a beautiful and again iconic rifle. I really, really love it, and especially it still pings, which is the most important thing of the M1 Garand. A uh, beautiful one, really hard to get. Um, Mauser K90AK, also a beautiful, beautiful Mauser. This one was made in 1939, if I'm not mistaken. Right there, you can see the date, 1939. Yeah, just a really nice one. I like the buttstock on this one, right there. <sighs> Again, beta fix. Beautiful rifle, bold action. Um, my MP40, <laughs> uh, we got over there, the MG34, completely original, and um, what I like about this one is the buttstock. It was damaged in the war, and then they repaired it with a piece of a shell casing, which makes it even more amazing. Uh, got a nice sling on it and drum magazine, and oh man, just look at this. Uh, it was more expensive to produce the MG34, more expensive than the MG42, uh, but they still continue to produce these until the end of the war. Um, lower rate of fire, uh, of course the MG42 is insane, uh, but still an amazing machine gun and really cool for early impressions and as well late war, doesn't matter. But especially early war impressions, really cool. Um, here we got the ZB30, looks a lot like the Bren gun, but it's not. This was produced in Czechoslovakia. The Germans captured this machine gun and used them a lot, especially the SS. First, the SS was not a part of the German army at all, so that's why they used these kinds of weapons, especially early in the war. So during the invasion of Czechoslovakia, they captured all these machine guns and you can see a lot of pictures of the Waffen SS using them. So this is perfect for a Waffen SS impression. Uh, magazine on top, right there. And just the same caliber as the MG42, Mauser K90AK, MG34, 8mm Mauser. Of course, that's perfect. And uh, yeah, just a really, really beautiful machine gun again. Um, moving over here, we got two MG42s. Just look at them, pure awesomeness. Beautiful stamp, 1943 MG42 serial number, and BNZ, same as the MP40. And then right there, FG MG42 serial number and DFB. All those secret German coats, really interesting. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you liked my latest purchase, the MP40, and I hope you enjoyed seeing all these weapons again. Uh, if you did like the video, please leave a like and a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.